in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed but happy is the man who is able to understand and answer these five questions. If you can understand these questions and answer them, you can be guaranteed that you are on your way to living a life of purpose, a life of meaning, and a life of high-level impact. Can I tell you this? I guarantee you that everyone on earth is seeking answers to these five questions the angry man who uses violence to communicate his aggression the young person who is frustrated over the issue of a job the student who is seeking admission the one who is trying to graduate the graduate who is looking for a job the married man in search of children the politician in search of a position everyone born of a woman is living for these five questions this is why you live this is why you breathe in fact it is a search for these five questions that brought you to be seated here right now tonight unfortunately most people spend their lives and their days and they are never able to ask and answer these five questions some may answer a few of the questions and have some measure of success and advancement but the lord himself is going to be asking us these questions tonight and my assignment is to ask you and also guide you to find answers can we do that within the few minutes we have pray a prayer whilst you are seated open my eyes oh god these are questions that pertain unto your destiny Listen, if you do not answer this question, your children will pay for it. You do not answer this question, you may live a frustrated life. Happy is a man who is able to ask and answer these questions. Five questions that pertain to destiny, that pertain to purpose. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you ready? Question number one. The first question that anyone who intends to live an effective life, just a little on the volume. Just, anyone who intends to live a life of meaning and a life of purpose must ask question one who am i this is a very simple but powerful question who am i this is a question that seeks to help you understand your identity there is such a phenomenon in our world today called identity crisis that if you do not know who you are life social media the sociological context will try to define for you a template about who you are that may not have been in your original script as designed by God. Who am I? Let's look at a few scriptures. Psalm 49 and verse 20. Please help us media. Let's work together so we can work with time. Psalm 49 and verse 20. The Bible says man that is in honor and understandeth not is like a beast that perisheth. One version says a man of honor who does not know 
will die like a beast in the field. That means if you do not know who you are, it is possible to live far below God's expectation for you simply because there is a problem with your identity. In Matthew chapter 16, Matthew chapter 16, I'll begin my reading from verse 13. Jesus Christ was with the disciples and then he asked them a question. When he came to Caesarea Philippi, he asked a question saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? It was a question of identity. They had worked with Jesus for a few years at this time. And yet they did not know who he was. Next verse, please. Verse 14. They said, some say that you are John the Baptist. Some say that you are Elias. Some say that you are Jeremiah. And some say you are one of the prophets. And then he asked them, he said, now the question is to you. Who do you say that I am? And he was shocked that although they were close to him, eating together, helping out in his crusades, they didn't know who he was. It was only Peter who spoke and said, I know who thou art. Thou art Christ, the son of the living God. It took the disciples a long time to really know and understand who Jesus was in his earth work. The question I have for you is who are you? Do you just believe that you are a biological accident that just appeared as a union between a father and a mother to produce you? You are just an entity that makes up the space of the 7.6 billion people on earth. Many roaming aimlessly through life. Do you believe you are just a figure in Nigeria's census, in Africa's census? Who am I? Is a question every champion must answer. When you know who you are, you will know who you are not. Let me give you two scriptures that reveal to you who you are. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1. Powerful scripture. 1 John 3 and verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. It says, therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us in calling us sons of God. Do you know what it means to be a son of God? It means one who came from God. It means one who is like God in every sense of the word. You look at the creation of man in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. The Bible says, and God said, let us make man. We are answering the first question. Let us make that man in our image. The image of God means his spiritual quality. Man, everyone, including you, was made in the image, that spiritual quality of God. And then man was made in his likeness. His likeness means his functionality. To have two hands, one head, two legs, and so on and so forth. So man, this man that is so confused, moving around wondering what his destiny is about the bible says that man was made in the image and the likeness of god i'm no longer slave to fear i am a child of god that i'm no longer slave to fear I am a child listen can I tell you this please look up many of us came from backgrounds where growing up they call you several names to the point that you do not even know who and what you are 
They named you after your result. They named you after your failure. They named you after any, maybe any health challenge you may have. Many times in the Bible, you find out that people were named after their condition. A man sat at the gate of Jericho, at the passage of Jericho, and the Bible calls him Blind Bartimeo. That's not a name. Bartimeo means the son of Timeo. The blind man who is the son of Timeo. What a description. And you see, we live through all these different names that they call us. Some call you stupid. Some call you foolish. Some call you a cursed child because of the region you came from. And when it's now time for you to manifest destiny, all these names start clamoring around your head and you are unable to move forward. But you must answer that question tonight. I have heard what my father said I am. I've heard what my mother said I am. I've heard what my school said I am. I've heard what social media said I am. God of heaven, who am I? It's a question you must ask tonight. And you must answer. I'm giving you help in answering that question. I may not be a billionaire's child, you may say. I may not be a professor's child, you may say. I may not come from a privileged family. But I am a child of God. It's a very powerful statement. If there is nothing in your life that you think is worth celebrating, find rest in this description of your identity. I am a child of God. Matthew chapter 5 from verse 13 to 16. Let me tell you what else you are according to scripture. Matthew 5 from verse 13. The Bible says, ye are the salt of the earth. Please shout it after me. Say, I am the salt of the earth. One more time. Say, I am the salt of the earth. Now look up, please. The assignment of salt. Salt has two basic assignments. Number one, for preservation. Number two, to add value or taste. So when God says through his word that you are salt, it means I cannot be a disadvantage to my world. You are the salt of the earth. A system of preservation and a system of value. When you have this identity, you don't walk around trying to look for groups to endorse you. You don't try to look for friends and association to give you an accreditation. God already called you an advantage. The Bible says, and everything Adam called it, that was the name thereof. It's up to you to agree with God and say, I am truly salt. And you know something about salt? Women, many of you are involved in cooking. There are times that if you miss some ingredients, the food is, is already, you can't, you can't. Are we together now? You have to cut some ingredients at a certain time. It is never too late to add salt to food. No, even if, it's, even if you make a mistake and you cook and the salt is not there, even on the table, you can still add the salt. And you will not know whether you added it before or after. The effect will still be the same. Say, I am the salt of the earth. Let no one bully you that you came too late. No. Salt is never too late. I am the salt of the earth. I bring preservation and I bring value. The Bible says, ye are the light of the world. Give us verse. Yes, thank you. You are the light of the world. Verse 14 now. You know what it means to be light? Light talks of solution. Light talks of the absence of darkness and confusion and chaos. So in addition to being salt, he says to you that I am light. Someone prophesy, say I am light. A light to my family, a light in ministry, 
a light in business a light in destiny the definition of darkness is my world without me i am light and the bible says john 1 5 that the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not let me tell you this lack of understanding identity is why we have occult groups today because these occult groups create a narrative if you join us they say you are powerful there are many useless groups online offline many groups that are antichrist in context but the pressure to become what god already says you are has pushed people to mortgage their destinies i'm walking in power walking in miracles i live a life of favor because i know who i am walking in power walking in miracles i live a life of favor please hear me i don't care what circumstance led to your birth prepared or not i don't care the the context i don't care how bad your past had been i don't care what the situation is let god be true and every man a liar if he calls you a blessing you are a blessing if he calls you salt you are salt if he calls you light you are light prophesy to yourself in one minute that in the name of jesus i reject from my life everything god did not say i am that relationship is trying to prove to me like i am a non-entity my lecturers respectfully may have called me names that should not be maybe my parents called me names that should not be they call you the black sheep in the family they call you a useless person answer that question tonight i am greatness on my way to happen i am the light the light i am sold i am a child of god a co-heir with god and a joint heir with christ seated with christ in heavenly places far above principalities far above powers in the name of jesus please be seated the first question tonight is who am i i found this question and it gave me rest in my life I took time to study who I was and who I am and more importantly who I was and I am in Christ it gave me rest no pressure to prove any point no pressure to try to live to no 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 I don't define myself just by what I wear I don't define myself just by what I eat I don't define myself just by what I enter in terms of a vehicle or the house that I live in. I need no other argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. It's just for me just for me Jesus came and paid it just for me just for me just for me listen you know the value of a thing by what is used to purchase it when you go to the market to buy things they are in, usually in grades maybe bags or food stuff they will tell you this one is thirty thousand this one is fifty thousand women they can bring out one jewelry and say this one is fifty thousand then they bring out something that looks like what you can swallow and tell you this is himself to become a baby walked upon the earth for 30 years and died raised you up with him 
and some individual looks at you and says you are a failure simply because of your cgpa looks at you and says you are a failure simply because you did not come from a background that gave you some privilege can i tell you settle that question tonight i may not have all the things that men clamor for for now but i settle in this fact that i'm a child of god i am one with him and i am a wonder on my way to happen in the name of jesus christ question two what is the second question you must ask if you want to live a life of purpose a life of meaning where am i from a very simple but powerful question where am i from where am i coming from the first question seeks to solve the issue of identity crisis the second question seeks to solve the issue of your source and your connection it's important for you to know you did not just evolve from a fish to a man with all due respect to science it took the creativity of the God of heaven he brought you right from where he was he did not just spit you out of thin air you are not just a product of a chemical reaction somewhere where am i from joshua chapter 24 from verse 14 and 15. when you know where you are from you will know how you need to be connected listen please look up fish came out of water and it must be connected to water the birds must be connected to the air and the trees for their survival. When you know where you came from and who you came out from, you will know that you need him not just as a matter of tea and bread, but a matter of life. Not knowing where you came from is why a lot of people have not handed everything over to Jesus and to serve the living God. Joshua 24, 14 and 15. Now therefore, fear the lord he said and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood please continue give it to us and in egypt and serve the lord verse 15 now and if it seem evil unto you to serve the lord he said choose you this day whom you will serve whether the gods of your of your father or the gods that were whatever it is all of those gods that are on the other side the gods of the amorite but as for me and my house because i know where i come from it's a choice that i've made i will serve the lord i need him as a matter of life and death the question where you are coming from will immediately put you in a position where you are not ashamed to be connected to source are we together there are many people today who act as if there is no god in heaven there are many people who act today as if they just appeared and evolved out of space knowing that man came from god means that man must depend on god and be connected to him to prosper is that true there is a saying that a river that forgets its source that river will dry up a destiny and a life that forgets its source will dry up the second question that god is asking you tonight and beckoning that you must answer is the question of your source your origin and your connection john chapter 1 from verse 6 and 7 very quickly let's hurry up john chapter 1 6 and 7 the bible says there was a man help me read that scripture if you can see it one to read there was a man stop 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 there was a man sent from where? Not sent 
from Zechariah, not sent from Elizabeth, not sent from Abelkuta or Lagos or Borno State or Imo State. No, there was a man sent from God. When he arrived at the earth, they gave him a name and they named him John. But the Bible says the man was sent from God. Question, where are you from? If you ever believe you are just a product of your father and your mother, the frame that gave your spirit its habitation on earth may have come from your geography. But believe me when I tell you, you are sent from God. That means you have to be connected to God to find fulfillment. You can replace God with any and every other thing. It will not give you fulfillment. The Bible says God has put eternity in the heart of man. It's a realm that only his size can occupy. No matter what you do, nothing else will ever fill that space. Is someone learning? Can I tell you? When we make altar calls, it is not just because we are saving people from going to hell. This is more than an issue of hellfire. You are bringing people to be connected to their source. Watch this. This beautiful fan here is blowing and giving me cool air while I preach. You disconnect this from the source. You don't need to do anything to the fan. It will stand here looking useless. No matter what else you touch here. The value that you get here is derived from the connection there. This is very powerful. Our world today makes it archaic to be spiritual, vocally spiritual, and declare your connection to God. We live in a world today where the more you seem to practice secular humanism and ignore the reality of the God in heaven, the more you seem to be approved by the status quo of society. I bring you a message tonight. Can I tell you, every one of you seated looking at me, you need God in your life, not just as a system of escape from hellfire alone. He defines the value of your life. You are everything Lord you are everything you are everything listen I love the psalmist the psalmist loved God so much you would see him describe his value, the value of God in his life. Where can I hide from your presence, he says. As the deer pants after the water brooks, he says, so my soul longs for you. Psalm 63 says, oh God, you are my God. He says, early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. As in a dry and a weary land where no water is. He said, to see your power and your glory, even as I have seen in the sanctuary. Let me encourage you, my dear people, never find it a thing of shame to declare your honor and your allegiance from the, to the government and the God of heaven that is your source. Even if you are in the midst of people and your ringtone, it rings and it's a song that honors God. Don't be too quick to offer it because you think it will bring shame for you. No. You must be vocally and unashamed about your love and your, your acknowledgement of the God of heaven over your life. Let me tell you what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding verse 6 it says in all your ways acknowledge him 
Acknowledge your source. Acknowledge your source. I acknowledge him always and forever. No matter what he does in and through my life, when men clap for you, make sure you let them know that I am what I am today because I am connected to he that is, was, and is forever. And can I tell you, if God be for you, if that God that you have so acknowledged be for you, standing beside you like a mighty terrible one, there is nothing that anyone can do against you. If you are with me, say amen. amen. Question number three. Why am I here? The first question is who am I? A question of your identity. Number two, where am I from? Your source and your connection and your allegiance. Question number three now, why am I here? This is a question of purpose and destiny. Why am I here? Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7. Let's hurry up so we can pray. Hebrews 10 and verse 7. Very powerful scripture. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will, O God. So I have come according to the script of a book that is written. I'm not just one who is moving around and hoping to find something to do with my life. There is already a script about my life. My assignment is to find it and walk in keeping with it. John chapter 4 and verse 34. Hear what Jesus said. After his discourse with the woman at the well, when the disciples came and met him, here's what Jesus told them. My meat, that is my satisfaction, is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish it. You can start and not finish. To do the will of him that sent me and to finish it. Please look up. My dearly revered mentor, whom I honor even in his death, Dr. Miles Monroe. One of the things that he taught me and taught the body of Christ is that the wealthiest place on earth today is not the gold mines in Congo and parts of Africa. It's not the oil wells in the Middle East. That the wealthiest place on earth today, he called it the cemetery where people died with visions that never came to pass books that were not written facilities that were never built men and women who were destined to make maximum impact in their generation some of them went as arm robbers and died in shame some of them died cheaply because the devil wasted and ended their life can i tell you this if you want to live a meaningful life, you call this conference being intentional, you must answer that question, why am I here? John chapter 1, where we read earlier, verse 7, tells us why John came. And this represents the universal mandate of every believer. It says the same came for a witness. To bear witness to the light. That all men through him, his witness, might believe. Whether this will happen through ministry. Whether this will happen through business and entrepreneurship. Whether this will happen through leadership. Whether this will happen through politics and governance whether this will happen by being an academician, it does not matter the geography of the witness. The same came for a witness to bear witness to the light that all men through his witness might believe. The 
the first serious book I remember reading of course aside from all of the manuals and the rest that you would get um, handbooks you know in the seminary and all of that the first serious book that I remember intentionally reading reading for the purpose of my destiny is discovering your purpose there had been many other books devotionals and other books that I remember reading but I didn't pay attention to them for many of them I just read them for reading's sake in all honesty just to fill that void of spirituality but the first book I remember sitting down with a notebook side by side and saying I want to change my life things cannot be like this when I found that book I was already making some level of impact but I wanted to be intentional about my life and it changed my life forever listen to me if you cannot tell me why you are on earth in one sentence you do not know why you are here as simple as this looks you will be surprised that there are so many people who do not know why they are here most people allow society to define their relevance part time and per season so a student now soon you'll be a graduate or you're already a graduate then the next thing in your agenda becomes to get a job then raise a family then raise children then try to manage some kind of sicknesses that come from depression and middle age then you die it's not a wise way to live you can live with intention ah. dependable dependable God it doesn't matter what comes my way you are still God this is the part of the song I love intentional intentional God everything is working out for my good. hear me he's intentional about making everything work out for you according to Jeremiah 29 and verse 11 that I know the thoughts that I think towards you said the Lord they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end you must be intentional about discovering why you are here. Some of you, after this conference, you need to go to a bookstore and go and get materials that help to define your purpose for existence. Question four, very quickly. What can I do? Oh, powerful. This is a question that seeks to help you understand your abilities your giftings and your potentials question one who am I question two where am I from question three why am I here question four what can I do let me tell you what you can do Philippians 4:13 Philippians 4 and verse 13 Everyone read it loud and clear if you can see it. Ready? One to read. I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. Acts chapter 13 and verse 6. What can I do? I can't be a non-entity here. This is identifying your giftings, identifying your potentials. Dr. Miles Monroe would define potentials as your inherent abilities. Abilities that are locked up within you. You don't have to create or invent them. You only develop and deploy them. Acts 13 6 did I get that right 
Please look for it for me. And David, after he served his generation, that's what I'm looking for. He slept with his fathers. After he served his generation. Once you're doing that, let's go. Huh? 1336. I missed one figure here. Please give us 1336. Same Acts 13. Thank you. That's the scripture I'm looking for. Read with me, please. One to go. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep. Hold on. That means you are not permitted to go until you bring that which is locked up within you and you serve your generation with it. Discovering your place in life is important, but discovering the tools. Now, please look up. If I wear a lab coat and you see me hang a stethoscope on my neck, you would most likely call me a doctor. Is that true? If you see me wear an engineering helmet and holding a tape or holding something around, you will call me an engineer. If you see me with a T-square and a drawing board or some laptop using AutoCAD, you most likely say I'm an architect or a builder. Your abilities are pointers to your potential. You can know where you are going by what tools you were given. You can't call somebody with a hammer and a nail a doctor. He most likely may be a carpenter. What can I do? What do I have? In Exodus chapter 4, from verse 1 and 2, then we jump to verse 17. Please write it and, and watch this carefully. Exodus chapter 4. The Lord appeared to Moses and the Bible says and Moses answered and said behold they will not believe me I have found where I'm to go I know my assignment my assignment is to be a deliverer but what tools will I use please keep that scripture there it's not enough to find your assignment you must know the tools that will make for your efficiency the Bible says they will not believe me nor hearken unto my voice for they will say the Lord had not appeared unto thee next verse verse 2 and the Lord said unto him please read with me everybody one to read and the Lord said unto him what is that in thy hand and he said a rod God will never send you until he put something in your hand that rod for someone that rod is your ability to sing for someone that rod is supernatural intelligence for someone that rod is leadership acumen for someone that rod is physical strength for someone that rod is the ability to be so trusted that that integrity and dependability it's time for you to take that rod he's put in your hand because the king word and the king's duty and the king's business requires haste go to verse 17 of Exodus chapter 4 it says and thou shalt take this rod in your hand wherewith shalt thou do signs as you are going to fulfill purpose your potential that will be what you will use to be a blessing to people can I tell you this please look up I remember many many years ago getting a sheet of paper and writing a list of my potentials when I found out what I'm teaching you now I had just in fact I, I'm not even sure I'd started ministry I wrote it down I remember I still have the book old book but it's there let me tell you the things I wrote I wrote singing I wrote creativity I wrote counseling I wrote the ability to teach all of those things there is none of them that is not in use in my life today can I tell you this 
everything that you will use to serve the purposes of God is already within you. Everything David had became the weapon if it was if it was the, the courage of a warrior and the ability to sling, he used it to kill Goliath. If it was music, he used it to drive a spirit out of Saul. Can I tell you, don't waste anything God gave you. Let me give you an assignment. Write out this night, make it an assignment. Everything you know that constitutes an advantage in your life, write it. My dear sister, if God has given you beauty, don't be shy and say, beauty, do I write it? Go and ask Esther. It was beauty that took her to the palace and now she was able to represent the purposes of God. Everything God gave you, forget the abuses that happened here and there. Don't let men laugh at anything God gave you. Gentlemen, if God gave you stature and wisdom, know that that is a tool for your assignment. If you don't use it for the kingdom, the devil will help you use it to destroy others. Can I tell you this? My dear friend, the five points and the 4.5 you keep hitting, don't you think it is a waste? Your CGP is a revelation that God put something in your head that will be needed somewhere in your destiny. Believers, and especially in Africa, we are masters at despising what God gave us. We keep admiring things in people that do not have half of what God has given us. Can I tell you, nobody will celebrate your gift that you don't believe in. You have to believe in it first. Colonel Sanders, you've heard about him. Kentucky Fried Chicken. That man was a military man, but he had passion for, cook, for cooking generally. And he came up with a recipe, a unique recipe. After he had retired from the army, he said, I can't waste my life like this. My life is not just to be a military man. And he came up with his recipe. That's what better what you call KFC today. KFC was a man who made up his mind that he would die empty. Listen to me, as I look at everyone here tonight, I'm not just seeing men, I'm seeing businesses, I'm seeing books, I'm seeing institutes, I'm seeing evangelists, I'm seeing anointings, I'm seeing mantles, I'm seeing graces. Can I tell you this? Hear me, some of you, your grace to preach. Someday, when the generation of our fathers have gone. Some of you who are seated there, you will be the one standing here. And you will, you will recap this thing. You will say 30 years ago, when our fathers were still here. Please don't disappoint destiny through carelessness. Make up your mind that everything God gave me. Today, Miles Munro has gone. But some of us remain his students and extensions of his conviction. Is God speaking to someone? I love the hymn that says, I'll do as it beats me, whatever the cost. I'll be a true soldier. Some of you don't remember those hymns again. The writers were people who wrote with understanding. What can I do? There is nobody seated under the sound of my voice who is empty. What do you have in your house? Second Kings 4. The woman said nothing except she did not know that what she ignored was what had the power to bail her out. Can I tell you this? Your reward in life will be based on your discovering, your developing and you're deploying your gift. Let me repeat. Your reward in life will come as a result 
of discovering, developing, and deploying your gifts. I don't do ministry for money. I don't do ministry for fame. I don't do ministry for honor. I don't do ministry for recognition. I do ministry because I love Jesus and I found it as a divine mandate over my life. But I tell you sincerely, my dear people, most of what many, most of what people will look for in their lifetime in discovering, developing, and deploying the giftings of God, he has brought them to my life so cheaply that sometimes I wonder, I say, is it true that life can be this cheap? You don't know how cheap life can be till you are in the presence. Look, no matter how a fish tries to fly, it can't do well flying. There are dolphins that try to fly, but they go back as a reminder that you were designed for the sea. There are birds that try to step into the water. Can I tell you this? You are a master when you develop, discover, develop, and deploy your gifting. There are gentlemen handling this camera right now. As anointed as you think I am, it is not my place. If I go and push this man, and I say, you don't know what the anointing can do, and I hold that camera, you may be annoyed by what you are seeing. You see that? Because it is not a gift, it is not an ability, I've not invested in developing it and I'm not deploying it. Finding your gift is only one part of the equation. Listen to me. There is a difference or there is a relationship between competence and confidence. You will remain in shame for the rest of your life until you find something that stands you out. Listen, end this journey of competition, fighting, getting angry, there is no space for that. Kill that any space for those things in your life and fill it up with relevance that brands you by discovering your place. You never see planes clashing in the air because of space. Traffic only happens on land. But once you are in the air, there is space for every plane, no matter how big it is. You never see traffic at sea like a big, these giant ships that carry cars that have almost skyscrapers built in them and yet they move freely at sea. Can I tell you this? There is a space for you. Let your gift take you there. The Bible says the gift of a man. Are you learning something tonight? The gift of a man. Someone shout, I am gifted. Let the devil hear it. Say, I am gifted. Let your destiny hear it. Say, I am gifted. Let your past hear it. Say, I am gifted. There is something I have that my world can celebrate Jesus for. Find your own. Many have found theirs. And it took them from levels of shame and reproach to enviable destinies. Let me give you an assignment. Please, when you go back, go and write everything you know in your life that constitutes an advantage. Don't let anybody laugh at you. No matter how stupid it sounds, write it. God, you gave me long hair, write it. God, you gave me an ability to talk. Once I open my mouth, write it. God, you gave me this beautiful voice to sing. Write it. God, you gave me this grace, this charisma for leadership. Every time I'm in the midst of people, they seem to listen to me. Write it. I will show you what you are doing. It's found in Philemon chapter 1 and verse 6. That the communication of your faith, it says... Are we together? I want us to read it together. Philemon chapter 1 and verse 6. That the, if you can't find it, let me just quote it. That the communication of your faith, it says, may be effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Have you acknowledged the good things in you? 
if they tell you you have a big head, is that the only thing you have? They must say the other ones you have too. Don't, don't dwell in negative things and say, oh, I have a big head, I am short, I am tall. Let me tell you this. Focus. Anything you focus on grows and magnifies in your life. You focus on failures. You keep wishing things that will never be you. Be proud of being you. This rod you have given me to the nations we go, oh God. I will take that rod of healing, that rod of your word, that rod of leadership, that rod of creativity. Let me prophesy to someone in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Beginning from tonight, may your rod begin to speak for you. In your campus, in your place of work, may the rod, the ability, the gift, the talent that God has put within your spirit, receive grace to identify it. Receive grace to develop it and receive grace to deploy it. Hallelujah. Please sit down. We're wrapping up. You see, in Africa, a man can be in his 20s and they may never allow him to develop his gift. Why? They will say he's a child. There is a wrong narrative you must change in Africa. You see people getting old and not blessing their world with any gift. They say they are children. You go to places like China and you will find young children who are barely teenagers, 11, 12, discovering things that are changing the world because the atmosphere allows for creativity. Don't be like Jeremiah. Chapter 1 and verse 5. Jeremiah said, I am young. Verse 6. When he said... Right from your mother's womb, I call you and I ordain you to be a prophet to the nations. Jeremiah said, ah, Lord, behold, I cannot speak for I am a child. Don't say I'm a child. Don't give God excuses. When you read Exodus chapter 4, at a point God became angry with Moses because Moses kept giving excuses. Lord, I am a stammerer. Lord, I am this and God said, who created the mouth? He said, keep quiet, Moses. Who knows, Moses would have received his healing. But he did not believe that God could heal him. And he said, all right, let Aaron come and be your spokesman. Since you think that the mouth I gave you is useless. Can I tell you, every time you ignore what God has given you, God will transfer that grace to someone else who can appreciate it. It's true. Go and read your Bible. Matthew 26, the parable of the talents. See what happened to the man who ignored his own talent. When he brought it, he said, I know you are a hard man. You like reaping where you did not sow. Look at what you gave me. And he said, no problem, give it to me. He took it to the man who identified it. There is nothing God gave me that will not be used to bless my world. If he gave me a voice to sing, I will sing. If he gave me a brain to think, I will think. If he gave me a lips to declare his grace, I will declare it. If he gave me an anointing to heal, I will heal every sick person I find. If he gave me a grace to cast out devils, I will cast out every devil I find. Everything you have given me, oh God, let it be used for your glory. Is someone learning tonight? Question one. Who am I? Question two, where am I from? Question three, why am I here? Question four, what can I do? Question five, where am I going? The fifth and the last question you must answer is a question about your destination, both here and when this life is over. Is the fifth question that any man who wants to live a life of meaning and purpose and relevance must answer. First Corinthians 15 19. Please write it down. First Corinthians 15 19. Let's read together if we can see it. Ready? One to read. If in this life only we have hope in Christ. He said, we are of all men most miserable. That means in all of your voyage, you come to a point where you realize that someday, 
this life will be over no matter how young you think you are no matter how old you think you are even the baby that was born today will get to a point where their lives and their destinies wrap up whether it is the day that you see him or the day he sees you the day both of you meet that is the end of your chapter here all my days on earth I will await The moment that I see you face to face For nothing in this world can satisfy Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry oh. Treasure of my heart and of my soul. Sin my weakness, you are merciful. Redeemer of my past and present wrong. You're the holder of my future days to come. So who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Much less love and beauty, endless war. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Yes, you are the cup that will run dry. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. You are closer to your the end of your day now than you were when you woke up this morning. You may not like to hear what I'm saying, but it's the truth. Whether you like it or not. For every time you celebrate your birthday, realize that you're celebrating two things. Number one, you are celebrating the reason for which you were born not just the day you were born you are celebrating the reason for which you were born number two you are acknowledging the fact that time is going celebration of birthday is an acknowledgement that i do not have forever on this earth can i tell you it is my desire and my prayer for you that by the time he calls you will not go in shame and pain and start giving excuses and say, God, but I did not finish this. Till he returns or calls me home Here in the love of Christ I stand Till he returns or calls me home here in the love of Christ can I tell you this we're about to pray everyone please listen to me very carefully everybody who is gone today was once in someone else's funeral Everybody who is dead today once stood before a dead body. Can I tell you this? By reason of the work that God has called me to do, I have seen many funerals in my life. I have seen people that I love. I get news about someone's transition an average of every day. Because usually when people die, they reach me in hope that maybe let's see if we can pray for the person to come back. So I get text messages. A prominent man in this nation who was just appointed not too long, just passed on to glory. And I remember my phone text messages, please let's pray for this person. Can I tell you this? Every one of you, including the person talking, if Christ tarries one day, this life, Listen carefully. Only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time. 
When it's all be said and done, all my treasures will mean nothing. Only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time. Lord, your mercy is so great that you lose our weakness and find precious joy in married clay turning sinners into saints and i will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life is gone listen there are many who have gone before us some of them started this year with us in fact some of them were alive last week as at last week if i preach this message they would think they still had 30 years not knowing they had seven days left only god knows how many days we have ours is to continue to declare long life so that we can serve his purposes but i repeat that song again till he returns or calls me home here in the love of Christ. I stay. Now listen carefully. For those who have answered this question, you don't fear death. You will live long ago. Don't worry. Don't be afraid. But the reason is not because of fear. The reason is because you need time for your assignment. You must get to a point in your life where like Paul, you can say for me to live is Christ. But to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. I came here tonight as led by the Spirit of God to ask you these five questions. We're about to pray. Listen, for some of you, question five. God asked certain people question five at the start of this year. They refused to answer. Now it's too late. Now hear me please. What I forgot to tell you is that all these five questions, you cannot answer them when you are gone. You are only given a chance to answer them within the frame of your lifetime. I bring you good news. I hope it does not sound like bad news. The time is ticking. You would have answered these questions last year, but you ignored it. His Majesty has brought me again to ask you one more time question one have you found who you are in Christ question two have you recognized your source have you recognized your connection question three what's question three Where are you from? And why are you here? Please go back and ask that question. Why am I here? I'm not just here to escort others. Clapping for people while they are making it. Question four. What do I have? Or what can I do? What can I do? I may not be able to do everything is not needed but the one thing that God has mandated me to do can I tell you this I vowed a vow with my life that as far as it depends on me I don't claim to know everything I don't claim I can do everything yes in Christ but as far as destiny is concerned I have my allocation I vowed a vow that I would not fail my generation can I tell you this you are listening to me today 
because many years ago I was intentional about my life I made up my mind that I was not going to waste my time roaming around earth stop wasting your time in jealousy in bitterness in competition and begin to focus on the matters of destiny and don't let the devil lie to you that you are small don't let the devil lie to you that you are young we'll sing one more hymn and then we'll stand stand up stand up for Jesus you know that hymn ye soldiers of the cross lift up his royal banner it must not suffer loss from victory on to Vanquished and Christ is Lord indeed. Two prayer points. I'm going to leave you for the next two minutes. Our time is gone. I don't know how you are going to cry before your God of heaven. Forget about whether I'm a preacher, I'm a student fellowship president. Throw that one behind. Cry for your destiny in the next two or three minutes. Cry for your destiny. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Answer these questions in prayer. Sheba katoska lekete brandegetesh. It is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth. Let mercy find me tonight, oh God. Someone is praying. Shabaka toska teleketa. Braga toska teleketeba siata. Who am I? Where am I from? Why am I here? What can I do? And more importantly, where am I going when this life is over? Five questions you must ask and you must answer to live a life of meaning and a life of purpose. One more minute. Cry before the God of heaven. Shateke parakoshka librandegetes. Someone is praying. As you pray, remember your generation. They are looking up to you. As you are praying, may God open your eyes. To see the crusade crowd that is waiting for you when you develop that gifting of God. See the hospitals that you will build as a result of living a purposeful life. See the lives that will say thank you that you were born. One more minute. Shabeketekos Emprakatoshkatelekata. Seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us. 
and to run with perseverance the race that is set before us. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and lift the way that you lift. Set our hearts on you. So you'll do what you do. We need a move. This is a move. This is the future of four square. Praying and remaining. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point and I speak over your life. Father, I receive the grace not to fail my generation. I receive that grace. Whatever it will take, I obtain grace. I obtain grace. If it takes prayer, I will pray. If it takes fasting, I will fast. If it takes studying the word, I will study. Lord, I will not fail my generation. In business, in politics, in ministry, in family. Keep praying, you have one more minute. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please do not forget what you learned tonight. Go and listen to this teaching again and answer these five questions like a student would answer an exam. Because if you fail this exam, it's not just a carryover you will have. If you fail this exam, it can cost you your life and your relevance. Let me repeat the question one last time. Number one, who am I? A question of your identity. Number two, where am I from? A question of your source and your connection and your allegiance. Question three, why am I here? A question of purpose, finding your place in life. Question four, what can I do? identifying developing and deploying your gifts your potentials and number five where am I going to when this life is over let me remind you of the assignment I gave you when you go back home tonight go and write it Lord, what is my place in destiny? Reveal to me. And write everything that constitutes an advantage in your life. Start developing it. Developing it by buying relevant materials. Developing it by, develop it by read, reading the books and listening to relevant teachings that 